face that this world has forgotten. Before going into this video, there will be spoilers. Mind you, no of these spoilers will contain any of the new Pokemon, only the old Pokemon we know as new moveset and Buster stat that they have got for Core Generation 7. Without this, let's go, of course, for the video. Ooh, what is up, guys? And of course, welcome to this video from yours truly, the Scarender. And yeah, of course, everything I leaked yesterday, which is both good and bad, mostly good for me at least, I'm, I'm kind of feeling that I, I don't like the idea of it's being released, but at the same time, um, it's great to know, but we are going to get our hands on, since I am a competitive battler, I do agree that most of the things here that got showcased are, in some extent, some, somewhat important, so without further ado, we're going to go over, of course, the stat changes of current Pokemon, and then we're going to showcase the few findings I got or made during yesterday when it comes to Pokemon learning new things that weren't available in Generation 6. Mind you, as I said before, there will be no introduction of any new Pokemon or new moves on these Pokemon, and also, I might have overlooked a few a few possible moves, definitely. I think these are the ones that was the biggest changes, and therefore are included on this list. But first, let's go over, of course, the buffs and rays of this generation. So I was a bit shameless when I decided to take this video, so bear in mind that the picture I will be using is the one that has been leaked on Twitter with all the stats, so if there is a bit of blurriness, uh, keep that in mind that there are original picture for this, and also I can help you with getting that in the links down below. Having that said, I'm going to actually talk about everything that is on here and um, possible changes for the meta. Um, one thing that should be bearing in mind is people was definitely focusing on the nerfs, and I will say that there are nerfs to some extent. Uh, Gengar losing its levitate ability for Cursed Body. Um, <clears throat> not a huge deal since uh, it actually didn't necessarily use levitate in the first place. Now, mind you, it will be hit by Earthquake, but at the same time, it now is some stationary poison type and takes away poison, uh, toxic spikes, which is actually not half bad. Uh, Raikou and Tensukyun loses their Absorption ability of Volt Absorb, Flash Fire, and War Absorb for Inner Focus. Also, seems like the focus here is on the VGC scene and it not being able to get flinched, which is actually somewhat beneficial. Mind you that these abilities have yet to be released in Generation 6, so while it is a nerf, it still isn't a possibility we had anyway. Um, we're gonna follow that up with, of course, Pelipper now getting Drizzle, so basically a new weather setter. Torkoal gets drought, not as good for it, but at least it gets it. And Giggle like, getting Sandstream, which is going to be huge. Um, of course, Tranjor Hippowdon is uh, still the more viable Pokemon, but Giggle getting it, it's definitely gonna be helpful and definitely for the possible metagame. Giggle, while not the best kind of defensive typing, is still a good response if you just want a rock type knocked weak to find and type as much as, of course, Tranitar. Uh, Vanillax gets Snow Warning, which is very, very interesting. Um, still kind of unviable, but at the same time, at least it can spam um, Blizzards now, which is not half bad. And uh, <clears throat> Beartig actually gets a new ability, which I think most of you guys can guess what that is. And probably the only possible spoiler here, of course, of future meta, Slush Rush. Uh, and Slush Rush is basically Sand Rush, but with Hail in mind. And uh, yeah, I have really not too much to say about that outside of it's going to be a game changer, at least for a few of these Pokemons, but we don't really know if Hail got buffed any more than that at the moment. Things might actually turn up a lot, lot different once the game comes out for everyone to actually, of course, be able to test it out. But those are the big changes in abilities as far as got revealed. It's very possible that we're going to see even new abilities being of course, implemented with Sergius, but as of right now, these are the ones that are available. And then we have the stat changes. Arbok will get a 10% or 10 base power boost in attack. Durio will be of, um, or Dugtrio, I mean, will get a um, 20 boost in, of course, his attack, being very, very much more prominent. And definitely with its Alola form being actually introduced very soon. Farfetch get um, actually a pretty big, huge boost in its attack from actually, I do believe, 70 to 90 or something like that, it, or 75, so it get a huge boost in attack. Durio, big game changer here, gets a speed boost of 10, and basically gets the Pidgeotto treatment, this 
this generation is gonna be something that's gonna be very viable for it because it never really lacked power. It was a speed tier that didn't push it over edge, but 110 is definitely there. Uh, Electro getting a speed boost, don't think that matters much. Uh, Executor getting a special defense boost in 10, and that's not gonna be all too much either. Noctowl, same thing there, gets a boost in its special attack, not a huge one at that. Ariados gets the special defense race, no idea why. Uh, Quillfish get a defense boost, that's gonna be great for it, I do believe it needs it. Um, Macargo gets um, actually a boost in HP and special attack. Uh, Corsola gets a boost in HP and special attack and attack, which is... Um, that that's cool. Actually, it's, um, its defenses get raised. That's, that's not as good. Damn it. Mantine get a 20 or 20 base power boost in its um, HP, which is gonna push it to actually become somewhat viable. Still lacks recovery though, but still got it. Which is definitely gonna be helpful for it in the long run and anything, because of course of its abilities and it's actually a water and um, flying type. It's actually a good defensive overall um, typing, which is gonna, like I said, it's gonna be great seeing it actually kick up. And then we have Pelipper getting a special attack raise, which is great with his new ability. Definitely gonna be a scarier mod at that because of the spamming with the likes of Hurricane and of course Hydro Pump. It's um it's something else, I love it. Then we have Masquerade who gets a pretty big boost actually, 40 base power boost in both 20 in both speed and um, special attacks, making it actually a pretty ferocious quicker ass right now. Uh, definitely likes of kicking it as um Oh, Vivillion, though I do believe Masquerade is still slower, it still is a very, very big deal for Masquerade getting that much better. Sadly, remains the same typing as far as we know. Delcati get a 20 base speed boost in speed. That, that, that's helpful. Uh, Volbeat and Illumis get the same treatment here of getting actually a raise in its defenses by 30 base in both stats and Lunatune Solrock Saint Pinier gets a race in their um, HP bringing them a nice baby month right now um, that could showcase to be important for them though I do believe it's still kinda eh but at least they both have access to the lights of recovery which is of course Morning Sun and Moonlight and uh, Chimenko gets uh, overall a pretty huge race here of course together with its cosmic power from this generation it's gonna be somewhat helpful uh, 75 races and of course in or 75 10 base of, of each pokemon basically what i'm trying to say uh woobat get a 10 boost in its hp crustle get a 10 boost in its attack Beatic get a 20 boost attack in its attack and uh, that could be good for it though i would definitely like to see it getting speed sadly but it's it's still ex extremely ferocious pokemon but not being able to kick on the likes of mega law punny it's actually a big deal, so sadly we didn't see it getting that exact race. You really want that 70 base speed to actually be a part of that, because that at least takes on viable ferocious Pokemon. So that's a bit of a misfortune with that, but at the same time, it does hurt a lot more now. And it has Aqua Jet, which is not half bad. And then Cryognal got a, actually a pretty huge race in it. It's actually a HP with 10 base, and of course in its defenses by 20. So that's the quick rundown of everything that got showcased, and now we're gonna go over new moves for at least 8 Pokemon that I found were a bit relevant, some more than others, so not a huge information about these, and like I said, I have been overlooking a few things, and definitely have been missing a few things too, but with that said, we're gonna go over, of course, a bit of the funnier moves, and also the bit of the more game-changer and viable move, if anything, really. So the first move that are new is, of course, actually Sherim. Sherim now gets... Petal Dance, and yeah, not probably the least um, <laughs> astonishing one of anyone, but at least he got it. So, new moves for Sharing and Petal Dance might be helpful for it if you don't want to use the other form, which of course is this that I'm using as a whole placeholder right now. Waylord gets Noble Roar, and while it might not be the most viable move, at least it actually got it. It of course decreases any Pokemon's attack and special attack by one. So it could be good if Waylord could force switch, which as of right now it simply cannot, but at least, like I said, it got it. Beaver has now access to Sword Stance, and that's actually kinda cool since of course with Simple it now raises its attack by 4. And it actually has access to the likes of Quick Attack, so one could only hope it gets it to extreme speed and basically become better and possible well in noon. So yeah, Beaver is actually a possible threat here in the future. 
Persian has now access to Parting Shot, which is also an exclusive move for Elizo Pangoro, but now the Persian can be a possible anti-Li with Parting Shot, Fake Out, one could only imagine how great this Pokemon possibly could be in the future, but Parting Shot is a big deal for a lot of things since Persian is so fast as it is. The Wormadan line has now access to Quiver Dance, and while the Grass Bug's typing is not the most viable one, at least the Steel Bug and of course the Ground Bug might actually become somewhat dangerous because they're pretty hard to kill and can definitely be able to set up in a new meta. Having that said, this Pokemon is still somewhat bad due to its base level, but it's kinda irrelevant. And now to the bigger changes, Mantine getting access to the likes of Roost, and that is definitely gonna help Mantine a whole lot for this future meta, being able to course, being able to recover, which is something it hasn't been able to do for, I do believe, four generations, so that is definitely going to help it out as a possible default and defensive wall. And Pangoro's issue with its slow speed might not be as bad as it previously was, being access to Lysa having a bullet punch for this generation, definitely gonna help it out with the likes of Sword Stance, so yeah, Pangoro just got the buff it needed to deal with fairy types furthermore, without of course likes of Gunshot and Poison Jab for this generation. And now to the change I think made most people happy, Flygon can now Dragon Dance. Now it's all been overshadowed of course Garchomp with it since generation 4, but Garchomp has never been able to Dragon Dance, nor is it able to do it this generation, but Flygon being able to do just so might just help it out for the last stretch that it's just been severely lacking for quite some time, never being able to set up anything outside of workup. So with Dragon Dance, yeah it's gonna be a game true for Flygon, question is, is this enough for us to be viable again? And now to the change I am most happy about, and that is that Dudrio now has access to Jump Kick and Sword Stance, and Jump Kick is the one standing out, because for the longest time now Dudrio has been somewhat effectively walled by rock types, and being able to actually hit them super effectively is a game changer. Now it's not a high Jump Kick, which is unfortunate, but it still is more than enough to actually do heavy damage. And of course with 110 base speed and Sword Stance, this thing might just be able to hit all the things hard enough to actually do well in the meta. Now, I won't say no, it's a OU Pokemon because it's probably far from it. And as we know, as of yesterday, today, really, we don't really know how the future meta is gonna look. But knowing that it's now able to defend itself much, much more effectively is a game changer for us and definitely game changer enough to avoid NU here. I do believe Durio just might gotta take it to become one of the more viable flying types in this generation, if anything. And with that said, we're of course gonna go over a bit of the ability nerfs, there aren't really a whole lot that are worth mentioning before I actually wrap up this video because as of right now everything has like I said not really been revealed or sorted out at least in a way that's easy to find out but we do know that unaware has been changed and it's been aware in such a way that the only effective mod when it's been attacked that is that any defensive boost or anything like that still are viable when it comes to it but um, it's worth mentioning that unaware it's not as effective anymore. It's just a defensive response for Pokemon, not an offensive response, which is a bit unfortunate. That means that people can bulk themselves up and actually be able to do semi well against a possible Clefairy, for example. Um, but it's worth mentioning at least. It's not a big derace, but it still is something that's worth mentioning. And like I said previously, Gengar got its possible nerf, sure. And then we have, of course, uh, Gale Wing being severely nerfed for this generation. Gale Wing will now only work when your Pokemon is at 100%, which is definitely gonna hold Talonflame. It's now pretty much weak to, of course, hazards and can't be utilized well without it. Now, Talonflame is still a pretty fast Pokemon, but not being able to ensure that you go first with Greybird is definitely a game changer for it and uh, probably a big one. So much so that I definitely don't see it staying in OU, but that is at best only speculations. And of course, Eviolite has been nerfed from being a 50% boost in its defenses to 20% boost in every defenses. And that is still, while 20% is still a whole lot, it still is a question of whether or not it's worth it. Uh, because that pretty much means the possible leftovers might actually be better for some of these mods of Foregone 2, and Chansey might just be slightly worse due to it. It actually is so bad that Shansi just barely is more defensive than Blissey and definitely lacked, of course, special defenses this time, considered, of course, the previous uh, evolution from it. So, but having that said, those are the biggest changes as of the IRI I know right now. If you guys find out anything else, make sure to go share that down below. And I hope you liked this video. I do believe I'm going a bit too long on this, but there are a lot of information that is worth sharing. So thank you so much, of course, for watching, everyone, and uh, I see you with more updates when, of course, they are available when the game comes out. So no more of these kind of things till the game is out, I promise. So thank you so much for watching, guys, and I see you 
in the next video. Until then, take care.